today, I want to cast a spell on you. Everybody's scared of casting the club in their golf swing, but maybe you have to cast the club in your golf swing. At least it's got to feel as if you're casting the club in your golf swing in order to release the golf club correctly. If you think about it, at the top of your golf swing, what we're all scared of is basically the golf club being thrown away from our bodies, going on a path from out to in through the golf ball and creating a slice. And obviously I'm not going to be saying you should be doing that. However, it's going to feel like you're doing that. The difference is you're not going to throw the club forward you're gonna be throwing the club backwards, which is gonna have a strange effect on the path of the golf club. You're gonna be coming from the inside instead of from the outside. You have to be applying force to the golf club away from your body in the downswing. You can't just let your arms hang there and turn your hips like a madman or mad girl because it will actually press your arms and the club towards yourself. It's simple physics. If you were to turn the hub of a wheel as fast as you can, and you don't have uh, a force exerted on the rim of the wheel by the spokes, then the wheel will simply collapse, simply because of the forces that you're applying to the hub. So what actually has to happen at the top of your golf swing as you start the downswing is you've got to make a choice. Are you going to take this road down through the golf ball or are you going to take this road down through the golf ball? Quite obviously I want you to take the second of them and this means applying a pressure and a force to the grip which is unusual to the majority of people. You could almost say it's the missing piece in the golf swing and it's a rotation and a bending of the lead wrist back you see how the club head is being rotated back almost towards the camera, closing the club face. But at the same time, rather than allowing my trail hand to push the club outside the line, it is forcing the club to go backwards while the face rotates behind me. And the combination of doing that and sinking the arms and turning the hips will actually give the impression from the front camera as if I'm not actually releasing the angle. I'm not casting it if this camera is looking at it, but in my feeling, because I am losing this, what we call radial deviation here, it feels as if I am casting the club out there. The inertia of dropping the arms and turning the body, however, is creating an opposite force. So I will press out in this direction and the force is pressing back in. And that means that from the front camera, although my feeling is of pushing the club out, away and back behind me, you aren't necessarily going to see that whatsoever. All you might be able to see is I seem to have a bit more width in the downswing. And this is, again, the problem with this golf game, feel and real, what you think you're doing and what you're actually doing. To start off with, this is gonna have to be a conscious decision. You're going to have to train your wrists to do this because it's not what they'll do intuitively. Intuitively, accelerating the golf club means basically just doing that, just straightening the wrists along this kind of thumb line and, and that will basically do exactly what you don't want to do. However, if you integrate this twist, this rotation, bowing of the lead wrist, you will get the shaft going back behind you and then the rotation of your hips and the dropping of your arms, the pressing of your arms down into the ground will actually create a balance of forces working for you in your downswing. And this is really what you've got to be looking for, a balance of forces working in your golf swing, because if you get that, then you are really on the verge of the biggest success in your golfing life. This is the, the stuff 
that the golf professionals are doing on a daily basis that you are struggling with because you're basically not allowing your hands to work in the downswing. There is no other sport that uses a bat or a ball where your hands are passive until a second or millisecond before impact. From the start of the downswing or the follow through or whatever you want to call it, your arms are working. If I have a big heavy ball in my hand, I'm going to be pushing it away from me, getting width. Because I am pushing it away, intuitively my body knows I need resistance and therefore my legs are working to stop myself being pushed with it. And that is actually helping me to turn. So I'm pushing the club away, I'm pushing it down, and then I'm actually getting this feeling of throwing it towards and through the ball to the target. But without applying a force with both my wrists and my arms away from myself, it's going to be impossible. Again, I'm not saying you've got to be extending your trail elbow and getting your arm straight here. I don't think you'll even be able to do that, but in your own kind of mind's eye, you are first releasing and casting the club back that. This is going to cast the spell of into out on your golf swing. Then you're gonna be pulling and pushing the hands down towards the ground, whilst at the same time allowing your body to rotate back into its starting position and beyond. And as you get to the bottom of the swing, you want this feeling of stretching the grip, trying to really get width, as much width as you can at the bottom of your swing. One of the big misunderstandings that we have in golf today is the idea of hitting down on the golf ball. Sure, we're hitting down on the golf ball, but we're not hitting down with 30 or 40 degrees on the golf swing. A golf ball, we're hitting down with four or five degrees. Four or five degrees is like the width of a finger. If you take that to a point around about five inches in front of your finger, that is a five degree angle of attack. It's not coming down like it's killing snakes. It's getting down so that it's almost brushing the grass opposite your trail heel and it's reaching its low point just after the golf ball around about your lead heel and then it comes up. Imagine a plane coming in to land and giving the passengers the best landing of their lives. It's coming in so flat that they hardly feel the club touching down, the plane touching down in that case. And this is what we're looking for with a golf club. You want to be getting the club far lower than you ever have before. And the only way you're going to do that is by resisting the forces which are created by pulling the club down and rotating the body by pressing away and releasing and casting in your feeling the golf club back behind you. This will give you exactly the feeling that you're looking for, but it will feel to start off with a little bit strange because the club is coming back on this path and through rather than coming from the outside. Let me see if I can do that again. That was a better shot. Difficult to think about a golf swing and do it at the same time, isn't it? And that's why that you shouldn't be doing it. Try and get all of your thoughts in your practice swings, in your drills, and when you stand over a golf ball, press that green button and see whether your body is doing it for you. If it isn't, practice it some more. Hope you liked it. If you did, smash that like button. Maybe even subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye now.